Okay, I think don't see any questions in the chat. If people do have questions, please ask them here. You can also use the comments if you're watching at a later time and want to ask a question. Um, I think it could help everybody. You know, if someone's got a question, you know, maybe many other people have that same question. So um, if you do want something uh, clarified or something doesn't make sense, um, or if you like something or want to see something different, if you ask in the comments too, that's a way we can keep a better archive of that. Um, and I'll, I'll answer there, but I'll also try to make a point to cover that in future videos. So with that being said, um, here's where we left off on Wednesday. We went to a lot of trouble to try to get two profiles that would match our reference image for our tub. And we discovered that simple extrude, just one plane pushed into three dimensions, uh, really wasn't quite right. So we started uh, exploring the loft command, which requires two different profiles that then the computer ties together and kind of interpolates what happens between one profile to the other. We also changed um, the angle of that floor Go ahead and look at this with our wireframe. Nope. It's pure wireframe. And now we can see that slope, a pretty dramatic, intense slope downward to where our drain is going to ultimately be. So we projected our second profile onto an angled plane. Because one reason I like naming as much as I can over here in the browser, here's our three degree of drain. Go back to our shade with visible edges. And then um, we ended with a little bit of filleting, finishing off the edges, talked about the difference between filleting a face or an edge. Um, we had two different fillet commands. And I also mentioned that normally I would do things like filleting last uh, because it's nice to use these edges as references. When we fillet them, we've now kind of changed what the edge of this object is. If we look at it from the side, maybe this makes a little bit more sense. The computer, if we're thinking about it, we know that we're thinking about this edge, but the computer is seeing this top part where that goes as far as it will right at the top. That's going to be like this point is the is that outer edge. So kind of two different ways to define this now that we have that fillet. So that's just a you know potential wrench in the works. Just to keep in mind, we may have some references that we would really, when we say the edge, we care about this edge here rather than this edge. So we're just going to keep that in mind. Since we did go ahead and fill it kind of mid-process, we have a lot more work to do on this object. Um, we just want to be conscientious about what we need from the model and from the edges um, going forward. OK, we've also got this extrude command floating out here. Um, we can actually still enable it if we move our history um, playhead forward, our marker. OK, it can actually do something still, because um, we still have that sketch geometry Okay, this tub opening is still active. It can still tie to that. We don't want that. We've found a new solution that works better. So I'm going to right click and just hit delete. We don't need that anymore. Um, a few housekeeping things I noticed. Excuse me, something a little off last time we were talking um, with our canvases, our reference images. They worked fine for getting us where we are. Um, but I noticed this view looks right, and I'm going to change the opacity of our body, our body which we also changed the material of. I'm going to change this 50% so we can see the body, but also a little bit more clarity with the canvas. So it looks like it's sitting there nicely. These kind of more square shoulders of the tub are towards the faucet end, and it, the taper side is um, away from the faucet and drain, which that looks like the reference image, and it makes sense um, kind of conceptually as a tub. So this is our right back view, and we've got it in our main views, which we've calibrated these views to the image. I'm going to hit back left, and we're going to see this is the issue I'm talking about. It kind of threw me off. Um, definitely didn't have enough coffee last stream. Wasn't able to kind of react to this as I'd hoped. Um, but here we can see this tapered side is now where the drain is, and the shouldered, more square side, is away from the drain, according to the reference image. So 
I tried a couple ways to fix this, but I think what it was was I just used the wrong image or the wrong plane to begin with. So another teaching moment when things go wrong, if we can fix them, hopefully folks can learn from that. Um, you know, I'd rather not hide the stumbles. I think it can be useful to see them. So I'm going to find that image that's maybe flipped or wrong. And because we started off with the option to use four different reference images, um, I can change this to one of those. So I'm going to right click, edit that canvas. I'm going to double click where it says image. I'm going to insert from computer. And I'm going to find where, I'm going to make this window a little smaller so we can see everything at once. Here I am in Windows Explorer. And we can see where the reference image is, but then where our body is. We're going to try to find the image that matches what the body geometry is actually doing. Rather than like flipping around our name views and trying to figure out which one that image really is, um, I'm going to find, because we have these four different isometric views to start with, I'm going to find which one matches. So here's our shoulders in the back, here's our tapered. So the, the faucet should be on this end, pointing towards the top right of the screen. So looking here, I see that this image looks best. I'm going to click open. Look at that. It falls right into place beautifully. Because we did all that calibration before, Fusion remembers that. Remember, things are parametric. So we can change that out. Um, we didn't have to make any adjustments. And if we look at things now, that is just what we need. Our right back, our back left views, match the images to the bodies. So I think we're back in business. So what I wanted to work on today was this faucet region. We've got um, this kind of gooseneck, it's a technical term, I suppose, uh, faucet. And then we have our tap handles, which um, rather than like a knob, I think they're more of like a lever style handle with like a long part that the hand can grasp, but more like a, um, yeah, like a handle. Um, and then they meet a base perpendicularly, probably. It's so pixelated, we kind of have to come up with some ideas of what this is. You can see from one view, it's a little more foreshortened than the other. Um, well, I guess these are kind of similar, actually. That's OK. Um, we can come up with that shape, and we'll just try to match it here. Ideally, yeah, that other canvas view maybe gave us a little bit more information. That's all right. We'll continue. Um, if we need to pull it in for some more detail, we can do that. I think we're going to be OK. All right. Um, so I, I wanted to start off by trying to just draw this faucet from a two-dimensional profile. So to start off, what I'm going to do is use find our midplane. Remember, we could just use the origin. That's also, you can see it highlighted there, the Y, Z plane. It's the same as the midplane. But I like using the midplane because we made it, um, and it has a nice kind of clear view of what it's doing. And because I've labeled it midplane, um, I really know that it's talking about this model. Um, it's specific here, so we know what we're getting when we choose it. So I'm going to say start new sketch, create new sketch. And that plane, where we're going to start it, is the midplane. OK, if your view rotates automatically to your current sketch plane, it's a matter of your preferences. I think it's somewhere under. Somewhere in your preferences, um, there's an automatic. I, I, you know what? I'll flip around and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take a screenshot of where this is and I'll put it up um, so you guys can see where to change that preference. But uh, what what's happens to some people by default is when you start a new sketch and you click that plane, it'll automatically make your view normal to it. This look at command is basically built in. Um, but we want to stay looking at our view where we can see that faucet. So we're going to do something funny. We're going to kind of try to draw this um, from the side. So I know that I kind of have this maybe rectangular base down here. So I'm going to try to draw. Oops, I've got another preference on. got something called, under design, I've got something called 3D sketching of lines and splines. I want to turn that off if you have that on. Because that kind of gets things a little unbound to our sketch plane. So there's that rectangle. 
um, we want to make sure that the faucet doesn't extend past the edge of the tub. We can see from here that's what could happen. So we want to make sure things are inside. I also want to make sure this is starting on top of here. So we're going to do some projection to help clear things up. I'm going to make this opaque as well, 100%. OK, clear things up a little bit. So I'm going to project this line and this line. Now when we project from this right side, excuse me, from this right side here, if I go to create, project include, project, click here. If we hide that body, we can see that it projected that top line. That makes sense. I'm going to go ahead and make it construction geometry. Now, when we project this line, what's going to happen? Project include, project. Okay. And nothing really changed because all that this line becomes as we view it from the right is this point. So why did I project that point and this line? We want to make sure that the base of our faucet is sitting coincident to the top. of our tub. And notice that coincident command isn't letting me proceed, because we really have a more specific command here. A line and a line that are coincident could be a few things. Um, well, parallel, they're already parallel, so we know that's OK. But what we really want to be specific is collinear. So we have two lines, lines that are on top of each other. We're going to make them collinear. OK, the other thing I want to do is we want to make sure this point here is just going to be clear that we don't want to go past it. So we're going to keep an eye on that. I'm going to go back to our three-quarter view, zoom into this nice pixelated blob here, and remember this is just going to be the base. So it's probably just going to be a little pedestal that we're going to draw the rest of the shape on. And we, we can see that we're not going past the edge of the tub. That looks pretty good. Okay, from here I'm going to do some spline drawing. I'm going to start on the pedestal because we know we don't really have a sharp edge there. We want it to be kind of the smooth thing. So I'm going to, with as few points as possible, and kind of imagining some of what's going on here, I'm going to do one outside edge. And then I'm going to start a new spline. Whoops. New spline. Start coincident to that point. And we come back in. It's more concave here. Okay, I added maybe a few too many points there. I can select one of those points and delete them. And maybe this actually sweeps down more. We can take that handle and adjust it. In fact, I probably have too many points again. The fewer points you have, the smoother or the more what a lot of boat builders would call more fair curve, which maybe we can find a better word than fair. Okay. So that's from this three-quarter view. That's a little maybe wonky and janky. Um, way to set this up, but it's using our reference image the best that we can. Um, there's a couple issues that I already am anticipating. This transition to this spline from this square 90 degree line to this flexible line is going to be really sharp right there. And similarly, it's going to be sharp between these two. So let's go ahead and make a tangent constraint between this part of the pedestal and here. Okay, now we have this beautiful transition between the two. Do the same thing down here. Now I'm clicking on the spline itself, not the handle. When we were doing that perpendicular um, spline when we were doing the mirroring, uh, I was clicking on the handle for the perpendicular command. Not to confuse you, just showing that it's a little bit different here. Okay, maybe just try to smooth this out a little more. Let's see if we can get away with even one fewer point. It looks a little... Maybe we do need that point. I'm going to just hit Control-Z a few more times. forgot to have on my key mapper for you guys to see what keystrokes I'm pressing. Sorry about that. I'll get this, I'll get this sorted out. There we go. OK, so you should be able to see the keys down there. All right. Um, and then let's finish that off by closing this sketch with just some kind of lines. So now we can see slightly shaded there. If we hide our canvas, there's slightly shaded in here. 
So let's um, extrude this and see what happens. We're going to do an extrude command now. I'm going to select both profiles. Now we're going to try a new way of extruding. We're going to go our direction. It's going to be symmetric because we're going to grow this thing out from the middle. And let's say it's maybe three quarters of an inch. Okay, if you don't like decimals and you're uh, you know, familiar with fractions more so, but you don't like memorizing the decimal equivalents, you can actually type in fractions into um, any numerical piece of information in Fusion. So here the distance, I type in 3 quarters. It's the same as 0.75. Okay, you can also type it here. I like to do it over here. And we're going to make sure the operation is a new body. Hit OK. All right. That could be like kind of a modernist faucet. If we wanted to make it softer, we could hit F on the keyboard, or we could go to Modify, Fill It, and select our edges. Just going to select these four edges, and we could drag that arrow over until we get kind of as smooth as Fusion's going to let us before it gives us an error. And I'm just kind of looking down here, just kind of sneak up on it. You could try an, a series of numbers too. If you drag too much, you can get into this kind of crashy situation, which you can see the screen turns black and this weird stuff. So sometimes typing in numbers is better. This is one of those times where sometimes numbers are better rather than feeling it out. If we see these two um, kind of touch, that could become a sharp edge there. So maybe I'll back off. Okay, Let's see how that looks. Okay, that we we might call that a thing. It might work. Kind of fits. But there's something about this squareness that just seems clunky and kind of not very soft to me. Um, we could maybe make this a little bit more um, organic or uh, streamlined looking. You could say it that way. This just looks kind of like um, phoned in. Let's call it that. We can make it a little better. So rather than an extrude, um, we're going to go back to lofting. You may have guessed it. So I'm going to drag my history marker back and I'm going to right click and say delete all features after history marker. And let's make sure our sketch um, drawer is open in our browser and let's make that sketch visible. We still can use some of this geometry. I'm going to double click on that or right click to rename and I'm going to say um, faucet side profile. Hit enter. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and add a um, let's edit this sketch. And I want a piece of geometry here that's going to help us find where we are later. I'm going to add a point. Point, point, point. That's going to be at the midpoint between this point and this point on this bottom line. We can click anywhere. Um, and then we can go over to constraints, click midpoint, click on the point, click on the line. And now that point's constrained to the midpoint. We can still move this sketch because it's unconstrained. But the relationship between this point and this line stays the same. Okay. Um, I want to show you another cam command before we loft, actually. But in order to do either, we're going to need to make a new sketch. I'm going to leave this sketch faucet side profile visible. And um, I'm going to create a new sketch. So I need to finish this sketch first. Go to create sketch. Click on the plane we want. The top of the tub is great. I'm going to click here. And let's just start with an ellipse. Let's see what this can do. So um, we made that midpoint, but as I'm starting this ellipse command, it's saying place center point. We're not finding that center point. It's not snapping there. So what we can do is just go ahead and draw our ellipse. I'm going to draw it a little bit away, try to align those built-in object snaps. Okay, and to finish that command, I can hit escape or enter. And if we click and drag on this point, we see we can walk it around. It's still not snapping to that point. So we need to actually project that point. So if we go to create, project, include, 
we're going to make sure this point is visible on this sketch. Okay, and then to prove that, I'm going to hide that faucet side profile sketch, and now we can see that purple point here has been projected onto our sketch. Okay, it may be a little unconventional to be sketching in this three-quarter view like we're doing, um, but I kind of like it. Sometimes I can get a better idea of depth. Um, you can always move around. Uh, you can view things with that look at view command and look at something straight on. Now we can see that point here, and now we can make these coincident. So select one point and the other point. Sometimes we've got to try it twice. Okay, there we are. So there's our ellipse. Excuse me. Um, I want to make this dimension constrained to here. So we also probably want to go to project. We can either project the whole line or this point. We could do both points. Because by definition, the ellipse is um, symmetric around this line. We could just do one point and get away with it. But let's do both so right here and click on the edge of the ellipse. OK, super. Let's hit Finish Sketch. OK, this is quite big, this um, profile here to the di diameter that it's going to end up down here. If we want to just look at that for number's sake, I'm going to hit D on the keyboard. Um, or I can go to Create. Excuse me, we need to be in Sketch mode. Create sketch dimension. Click on that dimension. We've got some number, 2.14 something. And then over here, go back to our, actually let's do it this way. We need to be looking at our faucet side profile. I'm going to right click, edit that sketch. Okay, so create sketch dimension. Let's just, we're just doing this for reference. 2.14 something, I'm just going to hit okay. And here, we get two different ways to dimension this. If you notice, depending where my cursor is, actually three ways. We can do, I'm going to look at it from the right view so this is a little more clear. Just a little bit of lesson on dimensioning. There's kind of three ways this can be aligned. So here we've got this dimension, or we've got this straight on dimension, or this dimension. Okay, and these are all different numbers because they're aligned to different axes. Um, in this case, what we're interested in is this dimension that's coming kind of directly as perpendicular as possible off of these two points in this line. Okay, this is really the diameter at that point, at that slice of this faucet. This dimension and this dimension um, are not what we're looking for because they're aligned to like one axis and the other axis, like the vertical and the horizontal. So I'm going to delete all of that. All I wanted to show us was, oh, sorry about that, make y'all seasick. Um, all I wanted to show us was this diameter here is about half of this diameter. So what I'm about to show y'all might seem a little dubious. Let's get to it. We're going to go to create, whoops, create, and we're going to do a sweep. Okay, we can get an idea of what's going to happen from the picture. Um, let's check it out. First thing it's going to ask is the type. Single path, um, let's try that to start with. And then our profile. Our profile is, think of it like um, if you have like a bead on a necklace, the profile is the bead, and then the necklace, the string, or the chain is the path. So here, our profile, our bead, and our path, our outside dimension. Now here, we've got a problem. It went ahead and took this whole um, edge as if it was going to take this bead, send it there, and then send it back. That's not what we want. So I'm going to hit X. I'm going to unclick chain selection. And now we can see when I hit chain selection, it's going to take that whole profile. If I uncheck it, we can now select one at a time, and we're getting a better, getting a slightly better result. I'll have to try a different, a few different things. So it looks like it's failing, actually. The body would intersect itself, it's saying. Um, the other thing I was going to try was to taper this. Oh, 
Okay, so we go. A, a negative taper kind of shows me that what's going to happen. It's trying to make it happen. I'm tapering it, so that means it's changing that diameter here. It's gradually reducing, um, but it's not looking so swift, as they say. Maybe let's try this chain, this chain. Okay, that's looking a little better. Um, I'm going to increase that negative taper. Okay, I did a few things at once there. I apologize about that. Um, so the first thing we tried, just to review, we made sure we had chain selection off. The first thing I tried was this outside chain. And by default, it comes with no taper. Okay, what I was playing with was I dragged this arrow until we get some kind of result. And I'm seeing here that it's working to a degree until we hit um, this area where it's getting too tight and it's saying the body would intersect itself. This is one of the situations where Fusion um, likes to make sure things work in the real world, if you want to think of it that way. Um, sometimes a program like Rhino will let you do self-intersecting commands like this. So to try to avoid that, I made it go smaller as we went around that curve. So it would have less chance to intersect itself. Now it's still doing some weird kind of buckling here. It looks like it would work, um, but it's not the cutest thing. And to increase, or I've tried increasing that by making that smaller, that then started failing. So then I tried a new path. We've got this outside curve. Let's close that and try this inside curve. And this one looks a little better. It's not really staying between the lines. And maybe we could also make that taper some more. Maybe that's too much. Okay, it's kind of a, a linear taper too. So there's not like the ability to have it change um, a little bit in the beginning and not so much in the end or um, a lot and then a little. It's just kind of progressively as it goes down. So let's stick with uh, negative five degrees taper because we're going inside of itself, not outside. It's got to be negative. I'm going to skip twist angle. That's fun to play with. Um, but that's another thing. And then orientation. Um, parallel and perpendicular. The picture kind of explains it best, I think. Um, but it's kind of aligning it to that. It's creating a profile, you know, at like kind of infinite points along this spline. And then is, it, is that profile going to be uh, perpendicular to the point on that line? Okay, here it would be going like that. Here it would be going like that. Or each is each profile... Uh, parallel to the one before it. So that's not going to work because we have such a dramatic curve. Um, okay, so if I hit OK, that's fine, maybe. We were getting some strangeness down here, too. Um, that's kind of, actually, there we go, that looks better. There we go. So I hit OK, and it just rebuilt properly that time. So things look OK. Um, I could get into it. It's really not what we drew, though. So I'm going to try a new type. Um, we could try a path with a guide rail. This might not work. And sure enough, I think it's not going to do it. Yeah, I haven't had a lot of luck. It may be just something actually I, I kind of avoid, to be honest. The guide rail thing um, can add a lot of, yeah, a lot of precision. But long story short, sweep is not going to give us what we need. I'm still going to keep some of this sketch geometry, though. It's been useful. Um, I'm going to right click on that and click delete, excuse me. So we're going to go back to good old lofting. Um, and what I want to think now too is, is our curve really doing what we need it to do? Um, I'm going to right click, edit sketch. And let's diagnose this curve. Um, I'm actually going to clean up the shape of this too. This line here is just going to keep causing us problems, so I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to delete it, make that rectangle into something else. So now we just have one profile we're working with. And I'm also going to delete this line. We don't really necessarily want that. We could keep it and change some things, I suppose. Okay, so yeah, we were going to um, analyze the curvature of this spline. So with it selected, with our sketch active, we've got our sketch palette. With it selected, we'll notice a new option for view show up over here. So I'm going to click on it. Get this option, curvature comb. Once that's displayed, we get this crazy kind of, um, it's like a, a coxcomb um, roller coaster looking thing. 
So what this is telling us is kind of it's exaggerating the change in our curvature. And if we click on our points or our handles, um, it's not letting us do anything yet because we need to hit OK on this display. Um, we can increase that comb. We can increase how big it is, kind of how much it's exaggerating. I think the defaults, um, oops, one and two were fine. Or three, okay, sure. Well, let's just start over. I think I made a mess of it. There we go. 20 and 1, that's what it was. Okay. So now we can select our points and play with our handles, and we can see something like that. Obviously, I don't really know how to explain it, but that just doesn't look right. There's, there's like this really kind of, um, it's not even undulating. It's like this random kind of chaotic pattern. So I'm going to do Control-Z, go back. I'm going to be a little more careful with my inputs. And what we want to see is maybe if we do have an undulation, there's a more evenness to it. And that's probably going to help our future efforts at making geometry with this curve produce better results. So for example, if you are getting kind of wackiness, I'm going to just um, make this more exaggerated. I'll right click and say we want more splines. We can insert fit spline fit point. And we can add more points on here. And I'm going to hit enter on the keyboard to stop that. And now we can see with more points we have, the more complicated our curves get. You might need a lot of spline points for your project. I'm not saying that there's something like morally wrong with that. Um, sometimes just too much makes a really noisy shape. And we're trying to limit that. So I'm going to delete some of these extra points. And we can start to see things simplify almost immediately. Okay, so now we've got one, two, three, four points, really two interior points and then two outside points. So if we evenly space them, notice what happens to that curve as well. Okay, things still can go wildly wrong in a hurry. Now, I'm no expert to necessarily telling you what's right or wrong about this curve. It's sort of intuition for me. And we're not looking at our reference image right now so much either. Something about that feels better. Maybe it's a little too um, conservative. Maybe that's kind of an error of this. Let's go ahead and look at this spline too, this bottom spline. Okay, shorter, longer, shorter. You can see there's like limits to how much those handles can change when you change their length. But maybe it's balancing out. Oops. Okay, if you're sick of seeing these, all you have to do is click on that spline again, toggle that curvature display off. Now looking at it with just my eyes, I'm not really loving it either. So maybe we can actually, what happens if we delete that? I like that a little more. We might not need both of these splines, but I'm gonna keep them there um, so we have a way to kind of respond if we need to. That's also a spline point, so maybe that's what's causing an extra. Yeah, that looks kind of good, maybe. All right, so what I want to do now is, that was a lot of rigmarole just for one profile. To loft, this profile is actually not going to be so useful for us. Um, it's going to be a guide, but it's not going to be the geometry we use. What we're going to be using is this geometry that's intersecting or is perpendicular, like those beads from our sweep command, we're going to make a bunch of beads along this profile um, in order to create a better loft that's going to change shape where we need it. We can make adjustments to it later, which is, again, the joy of kind of parametric design. So I'm going to start labeling things. I'm going to call this um, faucet. This counts for spelling, right? Faucet base. We might need to change that later, but I'm going to go ahead and just make it visible, and we're going to move forward from here. I'm going to make a new plane. We're going to make a ton of planes that are going to climb this outside profile. I'm going to go to Construct, Plane Along Path. The question it's asking is, which path? So this path. 
if you want to view it from the right, just straight on, I am going to go ahead and make a plane where it's snapping there. Okay, this proportional versus physical, this is like, do you want an actual dimension from a certain point? That's fine, we can leave that checked. Um, or do you want it proportional along, say like, if this is 0%, this is 100% because we have a closed loop. That's fine. Okay. There's a couple ways we could do this. We could go ahead and make as many planes as we think will be useful. This might be a messy way to do it, what I'm about to propose. But what I want to do is make a plane, then make a sketch, then make a plane, then make a sketch. We're going to climb this with a plane and a sketch, like one hand and then the other. Let's go ahead and label things because we are really starting to build a lot of geometry. It's going to be messy later. So we'll call this um, Okay, maybe we'll use that as a template. So we're going to go to Create Sketch, click on that plane, um, and we could actually here, I want to project this because we still kind of want a pedestal. So I'm going to go to Create, Project. We could draw a new ellipse, but I'm going to keep things simple there. Click OK. There's a chance that what we have if we were to loft this profile to this profile, because we were building off of that perpendicular rectangle as our profile, as our um, the string of the necklace, not the bead profile. Um, it might just be a simple extrude if we were to loft these two, because I think these are perfectly on top of each other. And if we look at it from the top, sure enough, they are. So that, that project was really just a simple extrude. Um, but I think it's going to make our lives a little bit easier when we're doing the lofting. OK, so we're done with that sketch. We can call that. I'm going to copy this name to the sketch. It's OK if you have a sketch and a plane with the same name because they're different things. And now we're going to make a new plane along path. Click on our path. Um, sure, why not? We could make one there. Maybe we'll go ahead and try to stick with fewer points, though. I'll try to make it where we had our spline point. That seems logical. And I'll click OK. So we've got a plane there. I'm going to call that Faucet Profile 2. And click on that plane. Or we can say Create New Sketch and then click on that plane. You can do it in either order. And now let's make an ellipse. We click somewhere in here. We want to be careful now. Um, where our ellipse ends up. So if we look at it um, with our look at command, click on our plane that we're working on. You can see we don't want this ellipse snapped to that. I'll just show you what that looks like, because that would do that. We want it where this point is connected there. And then I think it would be best just to kind of keep these loose and shape them kind of in proximity to that other one. You could try to make this point coincident to here, but we would have to do some projecting and extra stuff. I think for now, let's keep these loose because we're going to make a lot of changes after we do our first loft. Okay, I'm going to hit finish sketch and name that two. Keep on doing it. If we're using the same command a lot, and if you have room on your screen at the top bar here for more um, shortcuts, you can always pin any of these things in any of these drawers to the top. So I've done that here. I've, I've hovered over plane along path, found these three dots, clicked on them, pinned them to the toolbar. So I'm still going to go open the drawers so y'all can see where they live in case you haven't done that. So click plane along path, click here. Okay, rather than the default, let's move it to close to where our spline point was on that sketch and click OK. I think we know the drill by now. Three. Make sure we have nothing selected or pre-select your plane. Click Create Sketch. I'm going to do it where we don't have anything selected. Hit Escape a few thousand times. Create Sketch. Click on that plane. Make a new ellipse. I'm going to be careful when we're starting, we're kind of unconstrained. But if we hover over one of the major axes, 
we get that in the kind of aqua. We get that horizontal bar and the other bar with the little hairs on it or little feathers. We do vertical, it does the same thing. So that, if we look over in our constraints, that's our horizontal vertical constraint that Fusion is suggesting we might want. We can see we snap into it. So I'm going to use that. We want to be aligned in that way. And then we'll go up. And maybe we'll do look at profile three. And I'll take this top edge and try to find there. Happens to be our origin on that plane. Try to find where that meets. And then I'll be kind of looking at this. You know it's not going to flare out like that. It's probably getting smaller, if anything. So let's try to keep that like so. Finish sketch, label. Make a label things last. I like to kind of clean as I go. It's the only way I can keep my kitchen in order these days since we are cooking almost all of our meals. Um, by we, I mean me, but maybe we as a, as a community here. Um, Got to construct, plane along path, you know the drill. We're going to try to go all the way to the edge, and it's going to go ahead and start pulling us back as if we wanted to go that way. We really don't. It's kind of being silly, actually, because, again, this is a chained profile. Yeah, there we go. It wants to continue along. If we were to go back into this um, uh, faucet side profile and delete this, it would end there, and we could very easily put it there. But notice the distance here says 1. So that was actually 100%. It's interesting. Um, it shows that as the kind of terminus. And we can see, too, that this plane isn't aligned to this line. I think that's OK. We can make some changes. Maybe that'll um, adjust. But let's go ahead and continue. Create sketch. Click on the plane. Make a new ellipse. If this is a weird thing to look at, we can maybe even hide our tub body. Make sure we get that snap. Go up just somewhere. Oh, I already messed up. So I started drawing this ellipse on coincident to that point. So there's a couple things we can do to fix this. Um, we could just delete the whole thing, start again. But let's see if we can do some um, constraint surgery. If I click on that point and wait a moment, just a moment, click on that point, we get this coincident marker. Let's see what happens if we delete that. OK, now we're free. Now there's a risk of doing that. I like trying to be efficient, but there's a risk of doing that. If we have a point selected and we see, in this case, this is easy to identify, we see our handle from our spline curve, if we hit delete, it's probably not going to let us because we're not editing that sketch, but there's a chance in other situations where you could delete a point from the wrong, um, the wrong geometry. But here it looks like it's just going to let us do that. Now we're free to move. OK, so we know we want this point to be coincident there. And here, let's look at it from the side. Just try to kind of eyeball that. Look at it from down here. Maybe that gets smaller. OK, that strobing effect is because Fusion's detecting um, that plane of our bathtub is still there. It's still kind of like active, um, even though we've hidden the body. OK, that's what's kind of strobing, so I'm sorry about that. OK, so it's starting to actually kind of look like a thing. Um, sometimes we can get away with adjusting these things, even if we're not inside of a sketch notice. I'm noticing that there's a little bit of a gap here. I'm not editing that sketch. In the browser, it's showing us which one we're trying to edit. And we can click and drag and do that. And sometimes you can get away with it when you're not actively editing the sketch. If it's unconstrained, you can click and drag something. I wouldn't get in the habit of doing it, because sometimes it can just explode things in a bad way. Um, but just showing it is possible. All right, the moment we've been waiting for. This lofting stuff is um, doesn't have to be this intense. It can be more fun if this is not fun. So we're going to start a new loft command. I'm going to click on this base here. Then we're going to click on, I'm actually going to hide the side profile for the moment. Click on this one. OK, we've got a nice perfect cylinder there, because we know those are on top of each other aligned. Click on this one, this one, and this one. Wow, that's looking 
kind of cool. It's a little pinchy here, maybe. Um, and we want to make sure our operation is set to new body. Let's hit OK. OK, let's bring back our, our reference sketches just for a minute. Right back. Again, hard to say. It's a muddy mass of pixels there. Um, but that looks like it's kind of a thing. Um, notice all, any profile sketch that we hadn't um, manually made visible was hidden by finishing that command. It sort of it doesn't consume the sketches, but it assumes that you're done with them for the moment and that you'll you don't need them anymore. Um, it hasn't deleted them; it's just hidden them. So don't don't fret if you don't see the sketches. I'm going to turn them back on, and I'm going to go ahead and save this because we're at a point where we've done a lot of work. We don't want to lose it in case. I somehow crash the computer by making changes. So maybe this base sketch is bigger. So we'll go to faucet base. You know, we could have probably logically called this profile one, then two, three, four, because we really have five. But that's okay. We won't tell anybody. Um, wait. Make that a little bit wider because I can see it goes a little bit further, maybe. And if we hit finish sketch, this one was projected, so it automatically updated. Beautiful. Um, going to hide our canvas again. What I think I want this to do a little bit more is point down. So let's see if rather than changing some stuff, let's just um, explore our options. I'm going to right click on loft edit feature and let's play with some of these guide rails here. Um, we tried that with the sweep. It went maybe not great. Um, let's try to look at these pictures. We've got rails and then a center line. Rails, so what's the difference? The rails, we can kind of see the profiles here. It's a tiny, tiny picture. I wish I could zoom in. Maybe I'll figure that out in the future. The corners are kind of connected. And in center line, it's just the kind of like just pierce through the middle, pierce through the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and click guide type because we have these outside rails. And I think we're going to have a problem because it's already selecting this whole thing. So we saw that before with the sweep. We're going to uncheck chain selection. I'm going to click on and make sure we've got our faucet side profile visible. If it's not, make sure it's visible. I'm going to click on this base one up here. OK, and it went ahead and pulled it all the way around. OK, that's number one. Let's go ahead and say a new one because we want to make sure they're not connected. Click here, click here. And did it like that? It didn't like that. OK, and why didn't it like that? Let's Go ahead and make sure we can see that. So if you need to pause the video, just go ahead and read this. Let's go actually more info. That's better. The rails do not intersect all profiles. All rails must intersect every profile. Using a single rail, try swapping this to the center line. OK, that makes sense. So what's happening is notice our profiles aren't touching the rail. So what we can try to do is um, make that happen. I mentioned we weren't touching them to begin with, but maybe we try that out. Um, OK, so let's close that for now. And we'll go ahead and just accept that as a new body. Sometimes playing with connected and direction can change some things too. Um, but that's right. So let's go back and we'll change our, go ahead and make this faucet. We'll make these match. So rather than trying to, if you, if you aren't so good at labeling or if you just don't want to be bothered to dig through here, you should be able to click on your profile in the viewport here, right click on it, go to edit sketch. And now let's try to make that coincident. So if you're coincident, click on that point, click on that line. Now it's not showing up because we need to project it. So I'm going to go to create project or P on the keyboard. And select this. Okay, interesting how it shows up as this line. That might cause some issues. Let's see. Coincident and there. Yeah, it's still gonna let us kind of fly around, but maybe 
that's going to give us a little bit better view. That's kind of strange. If someone has an idea of why that's happening, I'm not able to fathom it today. Um, but let's go ahead and make that projected area of construction. And let's edit this sketch. Edit sketch. And that's it. I've got to project it. I'm going to hit P on the keyboard. There you go. There's that weird line again. It's okay. Make that construction. Okay, if you accidentally are clicking and dragging something, Infusion kind of like locks it into something automatically. Just check out your um, coincident um, constraints that show up here. Maybe it was one of them. Now he's done it. Now he's really made a mess. Okay, that's what happened. Oh my goodness. Okay, if for some reason you totally took apart your ellipse like I just did, um, don't fret. Make this uh, perpendicular to this line. That should work. This line. Keep those together, and then we'll reconnect that to that. So we've, we've redefined our ellipse, and that's okay. Bring it down, and there we go. Yikes. Okay, so thinking about what's going on here, if we look at we're on profile two, I believe. So if we look at it straight on, we're on profile three. Since, yeah, okay. So since I projected this spline, it, it does become a vertical line there. So there's really not a good way to project that, I guess. But it looks pretty close. If we zoom in, you know, maybe we can just kind of check our angles. And when we zoom in so close, it really kind of, we get lost quickly. So you might want to just have your name views handy. Get found again. Hope I'm not making you all seasick on that end. Okay, and this last one, our sketch just doesn't go there. So let's go ahead and just, this seems a little backwards, but let's make that profile sketch just extend down a little more. And this might be hacky, um, but we're gonna, we're gonna roll with it. Looking at the right side actually might be the best way to make these happen. Oh, and I wasn't editing my sketch actively. It's bad. Okay, that worked out there. Okay. So this is all to try to get, I'm going to hide these so we can just get some clarity here. Excuse me. Okay, it went ahead and showed them. When we open up that loft command, I double clicked on it to edit it. You could also right click, edit loft or edit feature. This was all to try to get that second rail, to maybe try to get this like sag out of the way. Let's try to add that. Still didn't like it. Still not intersecting the profile. Well, in that case, maybe there's other things we can do. To change it. So maybe what we do is let's make that loft visible. Maybe we need to add a new profile here. OK. Um, this may be a reason to label things later, because we are going to now bring a new plane somewhere in here. And I'm going to look at the right. Maybe we just kind of find where maybe it's actually this point on this line is what's of interest. Okay, and I'm about to make kind of a, uh, a mess up here. We want to make sure this happens before this loft. So let's bring our timeline just back. Okay, is it not going to let us? There we go. Okay. Let's try to find where... Yeah, so we're two. We'll call this... 2.5, how about that? Wow, sneaky. If I'm so worried about labeling. And let's make sure that is there. OK. 
Okay, just keeping our order here, we've got plane, sketch, plane, sketch, new plane. We're calling this plane 2.5. This is the fussy side of me that's coming through here. Hopefully it's uh, entertaining to the least. We'll create a new sketch. Pick that plane, make an ellipse. So we're going to kind of forego that um, two rail constraint in the loft. We're just going to try to add another profile here um, to pull that geometry where we want it. The right side, hand down. All right. And it's still kind of smaller than the other profile. So that looks good. Let's go to the end. You can also click fast forward if you want to think of it that way. Let's call it 2.5 because we are going to want to keep these things in order here in a second. We're almost at an hour. I think we might get through a faucet. I'm going to do one more cool thing if we can get this to look a little cuter. Um, and that's going to add here. Okay, it didn't like that because they're kind of out of order. So maybe we can change that order. We can swap it with three. I think swapping is really maybe not what we want to do. So let's do it this way. We're just going to, wow, let's get rid of some stuff and click, click, click. We're just going to reset it. Start that order over from scratch. Okay. Now here's a good example of when more profiles doesn't help. So now, yeah, it fixed it there, but we've got this pinch and then another pinch. So I think actually after all that work, maybe we'll come back to it at a later time and try to try to fix that, try to work on that a little better. We've got a little pinch. It looks a little goofy maybe. Our one rail seems to be accomplishing a little bit though. So I think, I think that's a good thing. Um, I think we could find a better way to have those profiles connect to both if we wanted two rails. I think there's a better way to think through that. Well, let's go ahead and hit okay. I think that looks I think that looks pretty nice actually, all things considered. All of the kind of extra bits we did. We tried to make sure we tried our best. We can go back and work on that later. I think it'll be okay. Um, I think it looks better than the sweep. I think it looks definitely better than the extrude. I'm pretty happy with it. And we wanted to make sure that it's a separate body because we want those materials now to reflect the tub is different from the faucet. So let's make this thing actually have the ability to maybe have water go through it. Um, what we didn't do, or what maybe we're not going to do today, is make these like functional faucets and taps that actually have like valves and things inside of them. Um, we're just going to work maybe aesthetics for today. Uh, so under modify, we're going to find shell. Okay, it's going to remove material to make a cavity. So let's come down here and click on the face where we want that hole to be cut. And if we're sneaky, we can just drag that arrow very gently. So if we go too far, we're going to get some of these crashy moments where the computer locks up and tells us we have an error. It tried. So I'm going to rein it back in and I'm going to type in 0.1. So we've got a wall thickness an inside thickness of 0.1 inches and our direction is outside inside rather than outside and click OK. So if we're now to view this with um, wireframe, if you look at it from the side, this thing is hollow. It's hollow all the way until we get to this point here where it's not hollow. Now I'm going to hide our tub just to show that a little bit more. All right, so we could eventually like knock this all the way out. We could make an extrude and cut that through um, if you wanted it hollow all the way through. Today, I think we have maybe reached our limit of um, working on stuff. Uh, so we can pick it up again on Monday. Um, but there, we've got this coming through. So if water could go through there, we could maybe animate some water if we were to keep working on this project. Look at it with our canvas. So I think next time we didn't get a ton, 
done today, but next time we're going to try some similar commands um, for this kind of pedestal of this knob. I think we could do it with an extrude or a series of extrudes, kind of like a little um, tiered platform. But when we get it to this handle, we're going to try a new command. So please um, ask any questions you have in the comments. I've done, oh, I wanted to make an announcement about that. If you go to um, the YouTube page, so if we open up a new YouTube page, I'm actually going to open up just a private browsing tab. It's got that muted, sorry. Um, I put a link on each of the videos to a Google Drive folder where you should be able to download all the pictures that we've been using for reference images. Um, and it should be free uh, for access for anybody. So check that out. Um, if you want to get started, you got a little weekend project if you so desire. Uh, thanks again for hanging out. I uh, hope these things are useful for people. We'd love to hear some feedback on comments or message me or if there's specific things that you're working on outside of this too and you're running into a problem with, happy to help. Um, if it's Fusion or other CAD related stuff, happy to be there and help out. So we'll see you all soon. Uh, thank you very much.